We all know the military occupies critical chapters in New Mexico's history. Decades ago, the United States government built the world's first nuclear weapons here in New Mexico. Uranium for those weapons was even mined in the western part of the state. And on July 16, 1945, just one week after the military established White Sands Missile Range, the United States government dropped the gadget and unleashed a new weapon on the world. New Mexicans knew nothing about that test or the weapons. Not the New Mexicans hundreds of miles away who could see that white flash from the Trinity site early that July morning. Not even the people living near this brand new range. New Mexicans knew nothing about that test until after the U.S. dropped those weapons on Japan three weeks later. We know that the military is important to New Mexico's economy. There are Air Force bases like Cannon, Holloman, and Kirtland, national laboratories like Los Alamos and Sandia, White Sands Missile Range. We've also got armories, aviation centers, and a demolition range. But there's more to the military's legacy than jobs and history. Decades-old radioactive and hazardous waste is still being discovered from weapons work at Los Alamos in the 1940s. White Sands Missile Range has critical contamination dating to the 1960s. In Albuquerque, cleanup is ongoing for a jet fuel spill that occurred over the course of decades at Kirtland Air Force Base. And those uranium mines from the 1940s and 1950s, they are still polluting the lands, waters, and bodies of the Diné, the people of Laguna, and other communities in western New Mexico. Even downwinders, the descendants of the people who lived near the Trinity site in the 1940s, are still trying to get the government to acknowledge how generations of New Mexicans were made sick by these atomic detonations. Now New Mexico is faced with yet another threat. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, are toxic chemicals that cause all sorts of health disorders, including cancer. They've been found in the waters below Holloman Air Force Base and below Cannon Air Force Base, as well as in the drinking water for the city of Clovis and in nearby private wells. There aren't proven ways to safely dispose of these chemicals, and the military has resisted the state of New Mexico's efforts to get a cleanup plan in place, or even map exactly where the contamination is. Now, we've learned there may also be PFAS pollution at five other military installations in the state, in Rio Rancho, Santa Fe, Roswell, White Sands, and Fort Wingate. There's still so much to learn, including about where exactly these chemicals are and who has been exposed. If there are lessons to learn from the military's legacy in New Mexico, it's that there are no easy answers and certainly no quick fixes. That's why at New Mexico PBS, we want to know as much as we can about the PFAS that's been found below New Mexico communities. Visit our website, Groundwater War, to learn more about PFAS and its impact on New Mexicans.